slice of the city, and we learned about the history of the song, and also of, you know, we did the summer music tour, and we learned about Mozart, and all the, yeah, so all the city of music uh, highlights. And we got to play in the organ. Yeah, the church. The organ. The church. We played, I think we played silent. We played silent night. Yeah. 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 It's pretty. And how that music? Was that in no, here. here. Here, right, okay. Yeah, there's a picture of it. Somewhere. There's a picture of us, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so uh-huh. we we gathered all this information, kind of started to form the idea mm-hmm. of, of a storyline, and uh, then we went back to LA and we started to work. And Hannah started working on the book. We were writing songs and book at the same time, which was odd, mm-hmm. but that was sort of what we had to do because we didn't have much time. Mm-hmm. So I started coming up with some song ideas and forming the storyline, and uh, that all took what, about a year. I guess it was a year of that. Yeah, and we had a reading in LA in January. We did. That's and right. the choreographer came over, and a couple other yeah. people, from Dean Andreas, the director, who's so wonderful. Mm-hmm. And then we came back here in the summertime and we met the actors, Millie and Dominic, yeah. and um, some of the other key actors, and some of the kids have been cast, which mm-hmm. is exciting to see. And they did a workshop with Saida and John. Yeah. Um, and now we're here again. Yeah. <laughs> and how much collaboration was there between the two of you when the, uh, you know, the earlier stages, when you kind of were writing the story and you were doing the music? I mean, did you go no. along and do the song? Day, sort of daily or late at night, we'd be texting each other, you know. Because we, we're new to this. We're, we're new to the musical, at least I am. Not you as much, but the, the whole idea of the musical is so different for me because I come from film scoring, television scoring, that sound. And so this was a this was a, a difficult thing for me because I'd never written a musical. I'd written songs, but I'd never written a musical. And what's the what's the biggest difference between writing what you did before and doing musicals? Well, I think the biggest thing is that as the story was being written, we would, I would be writing songs with, with our, my team, and sometimes the songs would end up being not what the story would be, so we'd have to throw one song out and write another one, so it was sort of this, you know, this trial and error is what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and with film and TV, you're kind of in this condensed schedule, and you just get it done, and you move on to the next thing. Did you two know each other before this collaboration? No. You had worked together on anything? No, we <laughs> met through We met through my agent, yeah. This is when he got on that really, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it just immediately took... He's just took a wonderful talent. Yeah, he just took a wonderful talent. Like, easy. Yeah. He really adopted me. I like my... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's our other... Dog. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Your nice. music parents. Yeah. Yeah. Music parents. So uh, I wrote a book and I worked on uh, 11 or 12 television shows in Los Angeles. Any did we know? Maybe every Cameron Crowe's show, Roadies, and What Hot American Summer, and worked on Rebel Wilson's show, and Bad Boy. Okay. Um, you can see it online, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, and I adapted a New York Times best-selling series called Dork Diaries for film for Lionsgate. And... Yeah, and I had done a musical pilot for NBC, um, and that's what I had been working on. Yeah, and I had written plays before, and... Um, very prolific. TV she was very, very experienced, but, you know, all sure. that. Um, so it was exciting to, yeah, it was so exciting to, to, to meet everybody and start working with them. Yeah. yeah. Is it quite different, um, working? I hope, I was looking to see if you were still in the room, but I know you were in your mind if I asked this question. Was it different working here with an Austrian team as opposed to working in LA? <laughs> Can I ask that question? Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to take it. Oh, uh, whoops. Well, it was it was di- it was different um, in that in, in LA we're we're there with mm-hmm. everyone yeah. else, so we That's have notes in the room. Yeah, yeah. So it was just it was really exciting to have an international. Yeah. Communication, but it was also a huge endeavor. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was challenging. I mean, you can imagine. Normally, we're we're there in LA, and we're all working together in one room, and we can talk about question, we can just call question or a, or a yeah. concern. So it was a little difficult doing it, you know, 
yes. overseas. Um, that's the time, why. The time change, I think. Sure, that was right. Oh, that's the time change. Yeah. So I, I arrived here two weeks ago. We got here about two weeks ago and I've been working. So it's been great since I've been here, but it's been a little bit of a challenge because yes. we're normally hands on, and Hannah has an opportunity to see a scene or two or three and kind of make not give notes. And, yeah. and or John seeing the show changing. Thing. Sure. Yeah, okay. so it, it, it's been condensed, but it's been great. Right. Once we've been here, so. what, what do you think it would have inspired either of you on to, to go on from here mm -hmm. as a result of your learnings through the project? Wow. What do you think? Um, it was thrilling to work with an international team. Uh, yeah. So I would definitely be open to doing that again. Again, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, for sure. And yeah, just the uh, experiencing a, a different culture and having the discussions that we wanted to have about writing a show about the world that we that we dream of, the world that yeah. we want to see, and the peace and diversity and a community that we are endeavoring to uh, right. to create. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was that was that was super cool. Well, I don't know. So I, I think I think that's the, the best yeah. point that I think yeah, it's a beautiful point that we had to take what the song what we felt the song, the original song from two hundred years ago was about. Mm -hmm. And it speaks of love and peace and goodwill among men and and and, and all the other connotations. And we really embraced that. And I think what Hannah did in beautifully in the script was we wanted this we want this to be inclusive. We want it to be for everyone. We really want people of all backgrounds to kind of come and hopefully enjoy a night of music. So, so do you see that there's a future beyond Salzburg and Austria for well, this? Well, why? We uh, hope so. There'll be a universal thing that we you hope. can yeah. show. We really hope. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Trump, the yeah. musical? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is my piece. Did you miss the piece? Oh, the piece. Yeah, this is the piece. Were you trying to finish the interview? Really? <laughs> can, can I ask you your personal relationship to song? When did you first come across the song? Oh, my God. Was it a great question. Was it a childhood experience? Was it a childhood um, favorite? I'm, I'm, you know, I was brought up a Catholic boy. And so, you know, I, I think it doesn't even matter what religion. We all know. Yeah. What faith? We all know this song. I mean, my God, I think just that we heard the, the some kind of the, uh, it's everywhere. It's in it's Africa, country, it's every country, country around Korea. the world. Everybody seems to know the song. I mean, that was the universal appeal of it. And for me, it was the song I grew up listening to as a kid, and we still play every you know Christmas together. So, I'm Tyler. And Hannah? Um, my grandmother used to sing in church choirs uh, every every Sunday and every Christmas, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I also grew up with that song. And what was so exciting when we came here and visited all of the many sites of uh, mm -hmm. more is to learn that it was written in German instead of in Latin, which mm -hmm. was hugely controversial and it really spoke to the idea that this is for the people, mm -hmm. not for just the elite, um, and that he, uh, that he was. His, he was confirmed by the executioner, which was a big scandal at the time because he was a bastard and, yeah. um, you know, not hugely accepted in his time in his community. So mm -hmm. we tried to elevate that theme to what's happening now and what, what type of people are experiencing that same type of uh, discrimination mm -hmm. now. But that's not what you asked. You said, when did I hear the song? <laughs> well, that's my grandma right. sang the song. You know, it's <laughs> It's very close to my heart. <laughs> the sense of place and the landscape, uh, is that something that you just discovered? Is that another layer to the song that you discovered when you started researching? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it, uh, it was essential that we come here and go to the, these places and discover who the writers were and, and, and the culture. And we really benefited greatly by kind of immersing ourselves in the culture. And, one of the things that I came home with was the idea, and I hope I'm successful with it, I hope people like it, but I really wanted to musically represent the, the culture in the best possible way. Meaning, stylistically, there's everything from 
grand Viennese waltzes to swing music, to kind of, you know, catchy, jazzy music. So I wanted even the score to be a world or a multi-layered experience. You know, we have rap music. I don't want to spoil it, but we have every, we have from contemporary music to very traditional music, and it's all hopefully blending into a, a beautiful, is it, is it, like it was a predetermined determination to make it, uh, let's say, appeal to the maximum demographic in terms of music, you know, being a, a let's say, a, a great leveler in all languages. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you do rap, you might do yeah. classic, if you do classic, you might do country. I, I, I think there's some truth to that. I think that we, and that would be under the heading of hands on music, just being as inclusive as we mm. Yeah, inclusive. And, um, and everyone is accepted. And you'll see in the show, there is such a broad range of characters, and they all love each other, you know? And then we came over here and, and we fell in love with the cast, and hopefully they like us, and <laughs> you know, and there's this love affair, and that's what we hope. Everybody walks away with it, they've seen this wonderful little musical, and uh, the other big thing for me was I wanted to write some melodies. I, I'm a big, um, one of my, pet peeves, as we say in the States, is that some musical theater these days aren't as tuneful as they used to be. And so I'm hoping that a couple of these tunes are catchy and that people will like them and they'll hum them when they live in the theater. So that was also that was also a desire on my part to really embrace the fact that melody is a Greatest music that ever in your cast members and huge cast. Um, did did you write it for an Austrian audience or for an international audience? Who was in your head when you were actually writing this? Um, well, we certainly consulted a lot of Austrians because we yeah. want to honor. We don't want to insult Austrians. Yeah. <laughs> <That> would <laughs> They've be been our generous hosts <laughs> and patrons. Um, that was a big deal for us. You know, we. We didn't want it to, even though it may seem like it's a bunch of Hollywood people coming over and what do they know about, you know, about our culture. So we really, re yeah, we really owned that. that and we, we wanted to make sure at every step that we were honoring the culture and the tradition. And, uh, you know, there's nothing, I don't think, playing that we're a fan. We hope, we hope not. We hope not. And, uh, and we discuss a lot with our producer, with Philip, yeah. about what sort of issues are happening. You know, so for example, there's at the time that we started talking about this, there was a refugee crisis that yeah. we yeah. were experiencing in the states, and something yeah. similar was happening over here, and still is happening. So we want it to be specific to what yeah. is happening in Salzburg, mm -hmm. and so we asked about you know what type mm -hmm. of people would be um, in this situation mm -hmm. in this city, mm -hmm. um, and there are locations that you'll see in the musical that are very specific mm -hmm. to the city, and mm -hmm. all that was part of the collaboration. And it was a huge, like we talked about this all together, it was a huge act of faith. Um, it was, it was, I, I wouldn't say religious necessarily, but the idea of having a vision that something could come together that doesn't exist at all in this huge yeah. space under these huge auspices, and then just saying, I guess we'll make it happen, this big dream. Yeah. All together is yeah. really something to, really to something. see. So. And the same question to Hannes and Eamon asked, well, what was the moment, the, uh, the uh, Eureka moment, when you said, this is going to work, this is working in my head, this is moving in my head? Uh, there's a character in the show named V, and seeing that young person yeah. play that role, embody that role, was really exciting and inspiring. It was exciting. Because it was yeah. sort of a vague notion, and then it was like it's that person existed, and yeah. we didn't even know yeah. it, and they and they own it. Our eyes. They own it. They, yeah. they live it, and it's just beautiful. So that's pretty beautiful. Cool. Yeah. And what did you rewrite? What was the scene that caused that caused you most hassle? What did I rewrite? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. Um, we had we had a we had a couple great you know this is normal we had we had two or three really other good songs that never made it on the show yeah and I'm sure there will be changes, be many yeah. changes again yeah. And, yeah. Be more. 
as it as it did. Yeah, yeah, sure. Most it's fun. Most fun. What? Yeah. The most fun moments when the yeah. creation comes. <laughs> what, what do you think? The the work 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 work. Yeah, now yeah. our families are here now, yeah. so that's so special yeah. to be able to share yeah. the holiday season what, with them in Salzburg. What What would be your aspirations? Uh, you know, if I, I asked you this question in two years' time, mm. remember the time you were in Salzburg land mm. and. How has it played it in, in, in the perfect scenario? How will it play it? We just sort of talked about that. You want to take that one for a minute? Sure. sure. Uh, if the show has a broader life, that would be beautiful. Yeah. And if we could share it in different mediums, in different theaters, in different languages, um, those would all be really wonderful goals. Yeah, I mean, I think our goal is just that. Is, you know, there's sort of a dearth of really rich holiday themed uh, musical material or, or films or TV shows and I think if we're lucky this might, you know, this might filter out there and maybe it would be a, a sort of a, a yearly holiday experience we hope. Well I suppose in the sense yeah. that the, you know, the song itself, you know, started here. Yeah. It, 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 it has been said in three other languages yeah. and every, most cultures in the world. Mm -hmm. um, do you dare dream? I uh, sure you got a dream. <laughs> you got a dream. Yeah, that's why we're here. You know, if we didn't dream big, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah. it was a very unlikely. Yeah. I mean, even before Philip approached John, it was a very unlikely thing that this would yeah. ever come together. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. That it pretty amazing. Did. It did. <laughs> I think we're just at this point that we're excited to see the show. Yeah. All together, I and mean, we've seen the show. But we've see the audience reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've never had an audience. No, we really. really? So tonight will be the first, first time. time. Oh, tonight yeah. will be the first so audience. So you can clap, clap. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they all tend to every night have a different one of the songs in their in their head. And I like that because it's not just one. Yeah, I I I really wanted it to be one of those things where one morning you'll be humming one of them and then the next day you're humming one of the other ones and because I think those are the greatest the greatest musicals have that in common where there's you can't really name you can name a couple of your favorites but then there's all there's those other ones that I love too. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that uh, but I'm not gonna tell you what my favorite one is because it changes. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have two favorites. favorites. You go favorite. Mm -hmm. She can't say that. What can you dance to? <laughs> oh, this what is, is the one you prefer to dance to? Well, there's a fun country one, but yeah. I actually yeah. like country dancer. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> it's one of the yeah. toughest numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's one of the toughest numbers in the show, you know, is that whenever there's a Western hoedown, or, or, you know, there's a lot of parallels in Irish. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it's really rousing and it's difficult, and to dance and sing and sing. And then you know they're singing and yeah. tons of lyrics and they're dancing. And so that's one of the harder ones. There's a little western. It's a big challenge for Salzburg as well because you know this is a city of classical music, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see that transition here yeah. because I think it's it's it, it's it, it's on the one side it's the the good people of Salzburg land, mm -hmm. and on the other side it's the people who visit Salzburg. Yeah. So I think the transition. Well, I think this is a really important transition. I'm really looking forward to it for those reasons. Yeah, well. me too. Yeah, and so are we. we. We don't know what the reaction will be. I know the musicians like the music. That's great. Yeah. You know, they didn't like the music when I worried, but they tend to, mm -hmm. they come up to me at different times and say, I like that. I think, Martina, remember when you were looking at the poster, we were looking at the poster earlier, and you said this is about a concert for progressive or new music in yeah. Salzburg. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I'm just wondering, is there any collaboration or is there any connection or is it likely to be with what's been done here and, no? That's an institution for Mozart, is that correct? It's an institution for Mozart. It's the institution for Mozart that dates back to 1842 and they have like the heritage of Mozart, like all the autographs, all the letters, and his widow kind of started it. So it's not this modern music, you said modern music? It's it's a modern approach as a position to the classical music, yeah, but it, it's it's separate. Modern interpretation. Of the theater, yeah. Right, gotcha. Yeah. Hmm. There are many. Yeah, you know, we're finding out there are many different entities. It's also produce different shows. So are, are you anyway nervous about say the the brand, and not in relation to tonight, but I'm talking about the brand, the Salzburg land brand in relation to Silent Night, they have a very sort of, they're promoting it in a certain way, it's their 200th anniversary, um, this feeling of needing to do justice to it or to, to I suppose, a reverence to it or irreverence or? It's a good question. I, I, I think until we perform it for the public, we just don't know. Well, we, hope, we hope that they'll enjoy it as a new piece. Mm -hmm. That goes along with it, hopefully honors. You will hear the song. Yes. And it's very, it's featured very prominently. I don't want to spoil it, but it's cool. Yeah, so we're hoping they have open hearts and open minds and they oh. Instead of we want you guys to leave town right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which I doubt will happen. But we we'll all clap. We we'll guarantee you we'll all clap. Okay. We're Irish, we're kind of loud. Okay. So you'll hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Double. 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 Are we going to see this on TV? I, I have this feeling with what you're saying oh, that suddenly it could, yeah. be a, it could be a film and we hope years so. time. Well, we hope so. Isn't that interesting? I, I have to just have that feeling. Well, I just have that feeling from the way you're talking. <coughs> and particularly mm. the story that's in your head. Mm. That's what you like because we there's a whole new genre of films yeah. that are coming that are, that are really trendy and on trend yeah. at the moment that, that have that mixture of the story and the music and people are just really going for it. Well I hope you're right. Wow. We're just talking about yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll be able to Hello. say I, I asked that question. Yes. yes. See you for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 